Sri welcomes you for the interesting webinar series on equine colic part 2. Throughout the years, colic is a major medical condition which is results in the mortality in horses. Unfortunately, because of diverse type of colic and the unique challenges of the equine digestive system, horses are always prone to the colic. But their management, therapeutic as well as surgical, is possible. And in view of the considerable expertise, Dr. Arun Anand will today throw some light on the therapeutic and surgical management of colic in horses. Sir, please. Uh, hello. Yes, yeah. sir. My screen is shared. Yes, yes sir. Okay. Uh, good afternoon, participants. So last uh, last day. Uh, is it okay? Done, sir. It's fine. Yes. Done. Okay. Good afternoon, participants. So last time, last day, so I discussed about the diagnosis, how to approach a colic horses. So whenever, uh, so uh, it has been seen that 90% of the cases, they can be managed with the medical medicine treatment as well. But we need to identify those five to 10% of the cases which need surgery. So, so I discussed all those aspects, how to differentiate whether this case is a particular uh, suitable for the medicinal treatment or we should go for surgery, uh, refer to the surgery. So there are few, uh, if I brief the previous lecture, so if we do the thorough physical examination, uh, which includes uh, mucous membrane color, heart rate, uh, estimation of uh, intestinal sounds, and per rectal examination. So uh, these, uh, these uh, parameters are estimated or they are evaluated thoroughly along with blood examination like total protein, PCV, lactate uh, level. And uh, if we come uh, evaluate all uh, the horse in, in the light of these uh, parameters, then we can easily decide that what treatment that particular horse need whether uh, medical will be fine and if a medicine treatment need to be done then what should be the, uh, the line of treatment if fluid need to be given how much fluid need to be given so i told you last day that pcv and total protein these are the two main parameters which will tell us that how much fluid need to be given one thing everyone should um, should keep in mind that if we want to save a particular horse a colicky horse so intravenous fluid is the foremost part of the treatment and giving proper amount of the intravenous fluid is, is, is paramount I'll say because without proper uh, uh, intravenous fluid uh, horse uh, doesn't respond satisfactorily so uh, amount I'm saying that giving 5 liter or giving 10 liter of a fluid in a 500 or 400 kg horse is nothing so uh, proper treatment that depends upon how much PCV level, how much total protein level is there. So I'll be repeating that chart again today so that if somebody has missed, so he can come to uh, know about those that parameters. So first of all, uh, let's let's talk about the different parts of the intestine which uh, which have a different type of anomalies. The first thing is, uh, as I, uh, I have showed the figure yesterday as well, uh, let me yeah so this part uh, the blue part which i am showing the blue part this one this is the most mobile this is this is the left side of large colon left side of large colon this is left ventral colon this is left ventral colon and this is the left dorsal colon this one this one i'm talking so this is left dorsal colon this is the pelvic flexure this is the pelvic flexure. Main problem, I'll say main problem that lies in this part of the intestine. So whenever there is any, because of the mobility, either it can move or displace to the left side or to the right side, or because of the drastic decrease, markedly decreased size of the intestine, when the large colon travels from left ventral colon to the left dorsal colon at the level of pelvic flexure, the size of the intestine that markedly decrease. So when the size decreases, so that becomes a spot for obstruction. So that's why infection, 
right dorsal displacement of large colon left dorsal displacement of large colon and valvulus these conditions are very common in this part of the intestine this part of the intestine so that's why this is the most common site for colic and second uh, is this one impaction this is a transverse colon this one is this one is the transverse colon see the transverse colon that, that this is from the right side if you see how i recognize because here is the cecum cecum is always on the right side so this is the cecum so the, the this is right dorsal colon because it's not seculated i discussed as i discussed last day because unseculated is the dorsal part of the colon and ventral part is seculated it has hostra okay so when right dorsal colon enters and forms the transverse colon means it transverses from the right side to the left side there too the size of the intestine that also markedly decrease so this become the site for impaction and enterolith so enterolith they are the stones formed uh, into the intestine uh, whenever we give high calcium diet especially alpha alpha hay or the or the uh, horses which are having a habit of eating sand or uh, or soil so ultimately slowly and slowly those enteroliths can be formed into the intestine and those they can stuck over here they can those stuck over here in the transverse so this is the third second mo uh, most common third is the fecolith where if somebody in some horse especially i i was again i am repeating mules and donkeys and some of the horses they have a habit of uh, eating foreign bodies and those foreign bodies they likely to stuck in this part of the intestine this one uh, uh, and this one so the whatever the blue uh, in, on your left side figure whatever the blue color is that is the mobile porch that is a mobile means you can they, they can move into the intestine whatever is the red color part of the intestine that is attacked with the abdominal cavity they they can't move inside the inside the body so uh, this blue part it is blue it means it's a small colon this is also small colon it's a mobile so the fecolis large fecolis and foreign body they can stuck over there as well as small enterolis they can also come and stuck in this part of the and the and intestine and this part of the intestine blue one this one small colon cecum and this this part uh, left side of large colon they can be easily palpated per rectal then uh, this is the cecum uh, cecum it has um, it can have uh, has an impaction or it can have a gas colic as well lot of gas can accumulate uh, into the into the cecum so two type of colic can be there in the in the cecum it can be a gas colic or it can be impaction as well then sand colic if some horse is having a habit of eating the sand the sand can likely sand uh, likely to settle down into the right ventral part of the colon this is the right ventral part of the colon so they they can settle down over here and enterolith they can they also form in this part of the intestine and they travel over here and they can travel through this one and can enter into the transverse colon over here and this this sand impaction scandry in, uh, impaction can be there scandry impaction how it happens because this i, I told you that uh, uh, this is the most common site of obstruction so when obstruction happens so scandrally it can lead to the impaction of the right ventral part of the colon as well so whenever uh, we perform a surgery so we can easily palpate that there is some impaction is there in the right ventral part but unfortunately this part can't be taken out up to the surgical site because it's very much fixed with the abdominal cavity so only the blue part but i will tell you how to relieve the impaction surgically if you open up how to relieve the impaction i will tell you later on so in there are some uh, practical points in that as well so uh, into susception a scared impaction and anterior enteritis that can happen in the interstite small intestine so this is the part which is prone to such type of problem and the gastric ulceration can be there in the stomach which can lead to colic uh, especially uh, you might have heard the name of margo plicatus margo plicatus is a zone between glandular and non glandular part of the of the of the stomach and that part is prone to the ulcer formation and especially 
uh, in folds, especially folds. Uh, if colic is there in the fold, then we should think about that ulcers might be there. And especially uh, another thing is like a transport. When we transport the horse, then that horse is prone to the ulcers as well. So if the if the colic appear after the transport of a particular horse, then chances are there that gastric ulcers can be there. So that that can be another reason for colic in a in a horse. Now comes to the same chart which I discussed. So uh, the two things like the PCV and the total protein, they will give you fairly good idea that what can be the prognosis and what should be the line of treatment if medicinal treatment need to be given, then how much fluid need to be given. So that means like PCV uh, less than 40 means normal PCV is between 30 to 35 to 40 uh, in a horse. So uh, less than 40 PCV, less than 7.5 gram per deciliter of the total plasma protein. So if colic appears, then there may not be a need for any any treatment. Means treatment means like we may uh, there may not be IV fluid in need to be given or any medication. Just watch for some any deterioration. Then 40 to 45, 7.5. So there is a we need to give 20 to 40 ml per kg per day. Means a 400 kg at least 8 to uh, sorry 400 means 8 to 16 liter in a day we need to give and we need to uh, note for any deterioration uh, one thing i just want to tell so such type of horses they show mild colic moderate colic is they fall in this category so intravenous fluid has to be given at 40 to 60 ml per kg per day so this chart will give you idea about how much fluid we need. So this is this is basically the fluid to replenish uh, the the uh, the fluids because the colicky horse stop eating. When they stop eating, it means that need the fluid which uh, a normal horse uh, would have uh, drank the water or would have uh, eaten the food. So that uh, fluid is not going inside. In order to replenish this fluid, we need to give uh, such amount of fluid, and there is some maintenance as well. So maintenance fluid has to be given along with it. So that's why large amount of fluid need to be given. Uh, so uh, so uh, so if there is uh, the PCV is more than 55 and total protein is more than 9.5, then it means animal is going to word shock, and we need to give the fluid at a, at a very shock rate. So giving fluid is the most important part of medical treatment and proper amount of the fluid is, is required without proper uh, uh, amount of the fluid because fluid once it's replaced the hydration means proper it, it replaces uh, the loss of the fluid and second thing is it acts as a prokinetic as well it increases the intestinal mo uh, motility uh, so that the ingesta can move forward. So let's come go to so this is a previous slide as well. So this is the difference between uh, medical colic. There is always a controversy that whether this horse is uh, uh, fit for the medical treatment or we should uh, think about the surgical treatment. So the, on your left side, green one, all the parameters which are uh, which should be there in a uh, in a horse which is fit for the medical treatment. Heart rate should be less than 60. Uh, mucous membrane should remain pink and CRT should be less than two nasogastric uh, intubation. This is also very important part of uh, examination or physical examination. So it should be less than two liter and color of the peritoneal fluid. It should be yellow transparent just like a uh, like a dark yellow color urine and PCV should remain between 40 to 50 and total protein it should be 5 to 8.5. If these parameters are there in a particular horse, then we should continue with the medical treatment. And even here, I want to add up lactate level as well. If the lactate level that remains below two millimole per liter or up to three is fine. But if it is going more than three, uh, then then we should think that there is some deterioration going on or some medi our medical treatment is not working. Another thing is that uh, that uh, this lactate level that tells us about uh, the some if infection is started building up inside the body or some necrotic changes is there, uh, some compromised intestine is there, then the lactate level likely to go up. 
and similarly if there is a horse need to have a sunny surgery then there will be a, a no response to the treatment medical treatment heart rate will likely to go up in spite of the treatment injected mucous membrane so injected mucous membrane if the mucous membrane goes towards further deterioration like it goes towards the violet color then prognosis is not so good large amount of nasogastric reflux more than 5 liter is there so that's also not a good indication for a medical treatment and absence of intestinal sounds uh, for low more, for more than 24 hours and abnormal finding is there for rectal examination like uh, like there is a distended small intestine fecal tympani is there last day i i told you how to do the per rectal examination so all those things you should watch we should see uh, when when our per rectal examination a large colon distension abnormal small colon finding is there means small colon uh, fecal it can be easily felt and large colon distension on fecal tympani or fecal distension can easily be felt per rectal examination increasing PC, pcv means more than 55 total protein is more than 95 9.5 and one thing is serial serial assessment need to be done it depends upon the severity of that particular horse if a horse is showing a mild colic then these tests can be repeated after 12 hours or 24 hours but if it is showing a severe colic moderate to severe colic then those tests should be repeated quite frequently maybe after 4 hours maybe after 6 hours if severe colic uh, is there then repeated or serial assessment will help us that which way our our horse is going especially the blood lactate level normally it should be less than 2 millimole and if the blood lactate level is going to world more than 7 millimole per liter that shows strong association with non survival in a number of studies number of study shows that if the lactate level go more than 7 then it's a, it's a not a good sign this is i'll say um, the best part uh, for if you want to give iv fluid this is basically a human triple lumen central venous catheter which we have modified and uh, we are using at our institution this is our our institution is the first institution which have started using these catheters intravenous catheters and these catheters they are very good like if we place these catheter for one time they are good for uh, for, uh, for 72 to 96 hours and we can continue to give fluid through these catheters and even uh, the on the owner suppose in at the field level if you apply these the such type of catheters then uh, you can even uh, educate uh, the owner that uh, uh, they can replace the iv bottles and the fluid can be continued up to 50 liter of the fluid can be get given in a day if you use such type of catheter one thing is like when the horse is having a colic horse is always restless if you apply some uh, iv cannula so those cannulas likely to dislodge but these catheters they they don't dislodge even if uh, the animal roll or if animal is restless so that's why these catheters they have uh, tendency to save the life of even the animal as well so i'll show you the video how to apply such type of uh, catheters like uh, problem is just wait yeah see uh, this is the preparation so you should thoroughly prepare the site of uh, insertion of uh, uh, yeah this is this is all assembly that comes in a triple lumen catheter you can easily have it from uh, a specialized human hospital and it's easily available and uh, that cost around 500 to 700 rupees uh so this catheter uh, this it has a cannula you can see this iv cannula so this iv cannula should be inserted into the vein so even the local anesthetic can be given sometime horse is not cooperative so you know the horse can see 360 degree see uh, its vision is 360 degree if you cover the eye so that that will be more comfortable uh for the horse as well as for uh, for the doctor as well so you can see we are inserting the cannula into the vein and it's a directed downward not upward it's a directed downward and this is the cannula so through this cannula we are going to put this is the guide wire so the guide wire we are going to insert the guide wire through this cannula into the vein now this guide wire is going into the vein see like yeah so the guide wire will be there 
uh, into the vein. So, yeah, take care that whole of the guided wire should not go into the vein. That then it can be another emergency. So keep at least one for one third of the of, of the guide wire into out of the yeah. Now see the cannula. We have removed the cannula. Now only the guide wire is there into the vein. So this is the dilator. So this is a dilator which we are putting into the vein. So this will dilate. Uh, the site of uh, so so if there is a need we can give small niche as well this is a blade is there so blade into the assembly that assembly so we can uh, this is a dilator now the, the 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 doctor is putting the dilator into the vein and now it's a dilator the so this dilation is done so that we can put the cannula inside so now there is a dilator and the guide wire so this is this is the catheter so this is the catheter which we put, uh, and then now we will remove uh, the guide wire. This this guide wire we are going to remove. Uh, so not guide wire. This dilator we are going to remove, and still the guide wire is there into the into the vein. So now we are going to slide the cannula. We are going to slide the cannula over the guide wire, and we are going to insert into the vein. So now you see the part and see it goes into the vein. Now the, the guide wire is coming out of one of the lumen. So you see the guide wire is coming out from one of the lumen. Just catch hold uh, and let the, the cannula slide over the guide wire. And now the guide, this cannula and the guide wire is inside the and we, then we take out. Uh, now see that we are going to take out the guide wire and the cannula is inside the vein now. So we are going, we have taken out uh, the guide wire and then we started with the IV fluid. And this assembly, it comes, uh, there is like, there is a wings are there, which we get, so I'll show you those ones as well. Now, now we are going to test that whether like it is, it is there in the vein. So take out and see now. The, now we suck the blood. Now we now we are sure that this cannula is into the vein. This is a triple lumen, and the good thing about the triple lumen catheter is that simultaneously we can give the fluid. Simultaneously, we, if we need to give some analgesics and antibiotics, so we can use all these three ports at same time. And there are double lumen ports or double lumen cannulas are available. That works equally good even if triple lumen is not there. Double lumen, you can use the double lumen cannula as well. So this, these are the uh, the holder. These are the hold uh, butterflies. So they they will hold. Now you can see they we can. It's being applied over the cannula. Now it's being applied over the cannula. And now we are going to suture. We are going to suture um, uh, this. Yeah. So this these wings of uh, the the butterfly is being sutured with the skin so that it should not come out. So you can see we are uh, the two two butterflies are there. So we, we are going to apply. So this is how we secure. This is how we secure the cannula. So now the four stitches, one over here, another this one, third and fourth. So four stitches can be applied. So it's not going to come out. So we, we can keep this cannula for, for at, up to uh, 96 hours. Four days, we can continue with the IV therapy. And if the horse remains restless, even that the cannula remain inside without any problem. So this is how it works. So uh, this this was a video. Uh, this was a video uh, which shows that how to apply the cannula and that cannula can be used for giving a large amount of fluid uh, into the horse because the body weight is is uh, is around 400 to 500 adult horse 400 to 500 kg. So that's why according to the body weight we might have could give a large amount of. Uh, so that's why these cannulas they work really well. So medical coming to the medical management of, of the colic. 
So first thing we should do is we should withdraw the feed. Never offer any food to the to the horse. Keep it off feed until colic resolves or uh, animal is relieved from the colic. So 12% of the colic, it has been seen that 12% of the colic is often associated with the change in the feed. Sometime owner uh, immediately uh, changes the feed. Uh, so that um, that can lead to the colic. So 12% of the cases they can have like that. Trocarization can be done with 14 gauge needle in a gas colic, especially the cecum or the, the, the left part of the large colon. That can be done if you think that there is a, uh, the, there is a distension, abdominal distension is there and that abdominal distension uh, can be relieved with the trocarization. It can be done, but it should be done under aseptic condition. It should be properly shaved and properly side should be properly prepared and aseptically prepared and then we should. Otherwise, it can lead to peritonitis or some fistula formation can be there. Then fluid therapy, IV fluid as per the PCV and total protein level in the beginning, give the bolus. 20 ml per kg means 8 liter 400 kg we should give with the full speed 20, uh, like within uh, 4 hours I'll say four, uh, 3 to 4 hours we should give uh, at the rate of 320 ml per, uh, per kg and then uh, we should give 2 ml per kg per hour means approximately 800 ml for 400 kg horse per hour we should give for next 24 hours means like for four hours you can give this amount and next 20 hours you can give uh, at this speed. So up to 24 hours we can we can continue with this such type of speed. So in critical cases even hypertonic saline can be given if it's like animal is going to word shock and you think that there is a severe dehydration is there then 7.2 percent saline can be given intravenously at the rate of three, uh, 3 to 5 ml per kg. It should not exceed more than 5 ml per kg and sodium it has been seen that sodium is very well tolerated by horses. Now, what is the idea of hypertonic saline is that when you give hypertonic saline after that give saline so that the saline that should remain into the vascular compartment it should not go into the dead space it should not go into the third third compartment so that it should remain into the vascular so that animal should remain hydrated the heart rate should be maintained so hypertonic saline can be given improvement and hydration can be monitored by heart rate, total protein, and PCV and total protein estimation. Now comes to the analgesia. Analgesia that is done, that is given to improve the sympathetic stimulation. Whenever there is a colic is there, sympathetic stimulation is there. Initially, flunixin, melamin can be given at the rate 1.1 milligram per kg every 12 to 24, depending upon the severity. If severity is less than every 12 hours more, the, uh, every 12, 24 hours and if severity is more than every 12 hours flunixin megalomene is given. But one thing you should take care that flunixin megalomene, they, 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 they uh, cover the any toxic changes in the body. So physical examination has to be done uh, repeatedly if flunixin need to be done so that we can come to know if some endotoxemia is developing inside the body. Alpha-2 agonist like xylazine and D-datomidine, it can be given. Xylazine is most commonly used and is very commonly available in our country. So it can be given at 0.3 to 0.4 milligram per kg intravenous. But that if you give xylazine, that has a very short duration, only up to two hours only. But if you want a long term, then if you combine xylazine with bitorphenol at the rate of 0.01 to 0.02 milligram per kg intravenous, so that will have a quite longer effect in order to take care of uh, uh, the, the pain. So medical treatment further, we can uh, give some lubricant. So lubricant can be given uh, the first of all a combination as earlier I told you whenever we give intravenous fluid and proper amount of fluid is given that acts as a prokinetic as well. And if we combine intravenous fluid with lubricants that can relieve the obstruction due to infection as well. Lubricant can be, can be given or it should be given by uh, nasogastric intubation as well. So nasogastric intubation if there is a nasogastric reflex is there more than two liter reflex is there or if there is a reflex is there then we should not, should not give uh, lubricant orally. Then paraffin if we, there is a need to give uh, lubricant through nasal there is a nasogastric reflex is there you want to give paraffin then it can be 5 to 10 ml per kg every 12 to 24 hours but avoid in nasogastric reflex this is the most important part. Other luxative like psyllium, 
uh, is the goal that can be given especially sand colic if you think that history shows that that, that particular horse is having a uh, history of uh, or habit of uh, eating the sand or the soil then psyllium or spagol can be given at the uh, at the rate of 1 gram per kg every 24 hour uh, in 6 to 8 liter of water especially in the call in the colic due to the sand ingestion so dosss dioxyl sodium sulfosuccinate it can also be given as a laxative at the rate of 10 to 20 mg per kg orally every 48 hours as a 5% solution it comes as a powder you can you can reconstitute um, into a solution it's a soapy like solution and you can give through nasogastric tube as well another thing which i want to highlight lignocaine it has been seen in our institution and during my research work as well i have found that lignocaine intravenous i am talking about lignocaine which is a local anesthetic and it can be given intravenous uh, as a prokinetic as well so it can be given at the rate of 1.3 mg per kg as a bolus followed by 0.05 mg per kg per minute along with the iv fluid which you are giving so you can put into that bottle at this rate and lignocaine also act as a prokinetic uh, so that that also can be given additionally so that was regarding uh, the medical management so this is the medical management and if uh, you uh, if you found that your medical management is not working and uh, still the parameters are not coming uh, to a normal or is, the horse is not improving otherwise 90% of horses they are likely to improve with this treatment but only the 10% of the horses they can have a problem i'll say 7 to 10% they can have a problem that they don't respond to the such type of treatment then we might have to shift to the surgical um, unit and so surgery treatment needs to be done so so now i'll be discussing about the surgical management of the colic so the first thing is like when the colic surgery is indicated if there is a distension is there in the abdomen so once we do the trocarization gas is relieved again the gas is filled it's not responding to treatment medic lack of response to the treatment is there there is a persistent pain is there and there is some obstructive mass palpable perrectly means you can feel that there is like in this horse which i did a surgery um i i'll say 3 uh, 3 years back i did a surgery on this horse and when i, I did the perrectal examination i found a very big fecolith was there uh, in in the pelvic flexure and that was easily palpable and it was a size of a uh, like a volleyball size volleyball size for uh, fecolith was there and um, when so we have to operate with and that obstructive mass was palpable perfectly so so it was um, taken to the surgical operation theater immediately so whenever we perform the surgery so orally oral cavity has to be rinsed with the water so that there should not be any grass inside so that we if we do endotracheal intubation that grass or some material inside it should not go into the air passage it should be rinsed properly hoof should be cleaned and shoes if shoes are apply, uh, uh, who shoes are there on, on the hoof then it should be removed and equine should be equine padded fe hood this is a hood yellow color hood is there so it should be applied to prevent the facial injury because whenever we give anesthesia animal likely to fall down and that fall down in order to avoid any facial injury of the head we apply this uh, hood as well so general anesthesia can be induced with xylazine 1 mg per kg and bitorphanol you can give in the same syringe or different syringe it, it you can give as a cocktail as well 0.04 mg per kg and followed by xylazine and ketamine can be mixed in the same syringe uh so xylazine dizepam not xylazine sorry dizepam 0.05 mg per kg and ketamine 2 to 5 mg per kg intravenous it can be given after 5 minute of pre anesthetics so whenever there is a, so the the head lowering the first sign will be that when animal get uh, sedated with pre anesthetics now this is this horse we have given pre anesthetic we have not given till ketamine uh, dizepam combination we have not given uh, so this is with the pre anesthetic head lowering will be there so but still there will be sensitivity will be there don't touch the hind line and a hind leg of the animal at this time animal can kick at that time even so after that when we give the ketamine so then we will push uh, we have a padded operation theater at our place so we push the um, horse against the wall and one person 
um, is holding the head. See the one person. So whenever animal like uh, after giving ketamine, when horses fall fall down, try to pull the head cranially. The way like you say that uh, myself, I'm pulling the head to cranially so that uh, it can horse can lie down safely on the ground it should not fall down it should lie down safely now the horse will be moved to the induction side from the surgical table to the surgical table using the how this is this is this is the monorail hoist system so we, we take it to the transfer to the surgical table here the surgical table uh, so dorsal recumbency is there so, uh, so uh, sorry ventral recumbency is there and the horse is adequately padded and attached to the pole and then positive pressure ventilation is started intravenous uh, uh, tubing is done and uh, the tube uh, that comes as a 20, 26 to 30 millimeter diameter is there. And general anesthesia is maintained with isoflurane, 100% oxygen, and positive pressure ventilation is started immediately. So 6 to 12 breaths per minute, and tidal volume is 12 to 15 ml per kg, and simultaneously fluid is given. So this positive pressure ventilation has to be given. Why positive pressure? Because whenever there is a colic, is there a lot of gas is there. And when you put the animal in dorsal frequency, so chances are there because of the distended uh, intestine, they're likely to push the diaphragm and there can be dyspnea. So always start with the positive pressure ventilation uh, along with the isoflurane and oxygen. So it is ventral uh, abdomen is properly clipped and draped. And then we gave 25 to 35 centimeter long, 25 to 35 centimeter long in CN. So this is umbilicus. Part of uh, this is umbilicus and part of the incision is given cranial and part is given caudal to this umbilicus. So you see that there is a subcutaneous fat is there and here is the peritoneum. This one is the peritoneum, still the peritoneum is intact. And now uh, when, when then we enter into the, uh, into the abdomen, the first thing what we do is we decompress, decompress the cecum and large colon by suction. So that we can manipulate easily, and if we want to take out the organ uh, towards the surgical tear site, then decompression will help in uh, proper uh, moving the organ, mobile organ, towards the surgical site. So it should be decompressed. Then, when it's one, it's a decompression has been done. Then thoroughly examine the abdomen by putting your hand into the abdomen and see where is the obstruction. So first you you um, uh, uh, evaluate the small intestine, then evaluate the cecum on the right side. Start from the right side. So start from the right side and st start with the right ventral colon, then goes to the left ventral colon, then go to the pelvic flexure, then go to the left dorsal colon, and then evaluate the small colon. So these these things they are they can be easily accessible through the ventral part of ventral incision. In some institution. Standing colic is being done, but personally, uh, it should be discussed. It should not be done because uh, horses they they are not comfortable when you perform the surgery in a standing in a lateral uh, recumbency or a lateral recumbency because properly you can't thoroughly evaluate the abdomen. So this is the structure which I uh, even discussed earlier as well. That blue part is the a uh, part of the intestine cecum left part of the large colon, small intestine and small colon. They can be taken, they can be brought up to the up to the surgical side. But the red part of uh, the intestine can't be taken out of uh, um, uh, up to the surgical side. So the first part in a normal horse, whenever do do the surgery, the first part that will come out or pop out of the surgical side will be the cecum. Cecum is a comma shaped structure which I discussed yesterday as well. So it has an apex, it has an apex and this one is the apex. This is the body and this is the base. So this is the first organ which will come out. And if in any horse cecum doesn't come out, it means there is some displacement is there. So it is mandatory that in a normal horse, uh, if there is only a impaction is there, obstruction is there, no displacement is there, then cecum will be the first organ which will come out uh, of the surgical site. Then, then if uh, the, uh, the uh, cecum is distended, is having a fluid density or is impacted, I told you last day even that the cecum is the fourth most common site of impaction. And if impaction happens in the cecum, then we should uh, immediately do the tiflotomy to drain the fluid if it is having a lot of fluid or if it is a gas 
or if it is impacted see this is this is the impaction of the cecum so cecum uh, even this is a very important part this is the colon tray this one is the colon tray see this is a colon tray and it's a slanting colon tray so, so i have put the cecum uh, on the on the slanting colon tray so that this is a surgical site surgical site you can see the uh, we are opening up the intestine away from the surgical site so that other organs may not be contaminated so so we are using this colon tray and colon tray is really very handy it's a slanting tray and um, it avoid spillage of the intestinal content into the abdomen or contamination of other organs as well so here you see uh, there is a lot of uh, impaction is there into the cecum so we did the teflotomy then we put the hose pipe water pipe into the into the cecum and then uh, we we drain out all the impacted part of uh, part, part of cecum so after impaction the next organ what you should do is uh, look for uh, the pelvic flexure which will be on your left side on the left side of the horse so take out the pelvic flexure how to identify it's a pelvic flexure i told you it's a hairpin like structure the structure will be like a u like structure will be there so the ventral part will be seculated okay so this it means it's a it's a left ventral this is left ventral colon because it has a seculations and it's a left dorsal colon because it's a plane doesn't have seculations so we can identify which part is according to the anatomy as well so the left ventral colon this is left ventral left dorsal colon so then this part uh, is the most common site of obstruction then we will we perform uh, the now we are doing the enterotomy at the level of pelvic flexure and the colon tray is there so colon is laid on the colon tray see the surgical site is somewhere over here okay and the we are doing the enterotomy quite away from the surgical site in order to avoid the contamination see we are we are putting the drain hose pipes in doubt so that there should not be uh, contamination and second thing is we can relieve the impaction now after leaving you see it is all decompressed and a whole of the impaction has been removed and it is now almost decompressed and we are suturing it back another important point i want to discuss over here that in this slide suppose there is impaction of this portion is there right ventral part is impacted okay uh, so then what we do is over here because this part is not going to come to the surgical site because it's attached with the with the abdomen uh, abdomen and uh, what we do is then we do the enterotomy from this side evacuate the material then we put the pipe uh, from this portion and let the pipe water pipe go to this portion okay so means when we put the water pipe into the seculated portion it will go into the ventral part of the colon okay and so there, there is uh, uh, so then we put the water then massage intra abdominally one person that massage and let the impacted material come out from this passage and it will come out and this way we will we relieve the impaction of the right ventral colon as well and suppose because there is impaction of um, a right dorsal colon is there this is right dorsal colon then we will put the pipe instead into the seculated part then we'll put the uh, uh, the pipe into uh, the non seculated part of the ventral uh, of the left side colon so the the pipe will go uh, then we'll proceed the pipe into the dorsal part of the colon why there will be impaction of uh, right dorsal colon because after this is the transverse colon and down transverse colon has chances of impaction and secondarily there can be impaction of uh, um uh, right dorsal colon as well so this way we use the uh, the root of pelvic flexure to relieve the impaction of the right ventral as well as the right dorsal part of the colon so now come so this was the particular that particular horse which i showed you earlier as well so this was the fecolith which was there in the in, in the pelvic flexure we took out the fecolith and the, you can see this is there was a pressure necrosis was there uh, at that site pressure necrosis was there and then we sutured it back but pressure necrosis was there but serosa was fine muscularis was there fine only mucosa part was uh, was having necrotic changes but uh, there was no need for resection because serosa and muscularis was fine blood supply was okay 
and uh, that this horse uh, we, do, we do the suturing and this horse they had recovered uneventfully and and now um, uh, is 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 fine now as well. So then after after suturing, so then we thoroughly lavage the abdomen uh, and then we suture it back. See, there is one Foley's catheter is there, and this Foley's catheter is is being inserted into the abdomen through a cut. Which is lateral to the incision. This is this is the incision line. So, with lateral to the incision line, would we put the Foley's catheter? This Foley's catheter serves two purpose. One thing that it helps as a drain because everyone knows that whenever there is a, any injury to the horse or when we perform any surgery or abdominal surgery, lot of postoperative fluid will be formed. So, this. Uh, Foley's catheter will act as a drain. So, if the fluid continue to remain inside the abdomen, so chances are there peritonitis can develop. So, this drain will help us uh, to drain that fluid and avoid developing the peritonitis. Second thing is, whenever postoperatively, whenever we perform ultrasonography in order to see the status inside, then this balloon will act as a guide. Will tell us. That if there is a fluid accumulation is there around that balloon, it means we can come to know that there is some peritonitis is developing. This can. And third thing is, if we uh, every day we can um, we can do the cytology of the abdominal fluid. So whatever the fluid coming out of this drain, we can apply on the slide and see whether any uh, how much neutrophilia is there, what is the how number of the cells. So that will also give us an idea about any uh, peritonitis is developing or not. So now after that, gauge piece is applied on the CN site for protection. See, there is a, um, a drain tube is lateral to the uh, to the incision line. So this is uh, the abdominal uh, wrap bandage. Abdominal wrap bandage. It serves two purpose. One thing is, even if uh, the animal uh, try to mutilate, the incision site is uh, is is safe. And second thing is, it doesn't avoid allow. Uh, the edema formation at the surgical site. So ultrasonography can be done postoperatively. This is Foley's catheter balloon. So this can act as a guide. You can see we are doing ultrasonography and we are looking at this is a PF means peritoneal fluid. Little amount of peritoneal fluid is there, and especially there is hardly any peritoneal fluid around uh, the Foley's catheter balloon. It means the horse is behaving satisfactorily and responding well to the surgery. So uh, this was about the surgical cell. Now there is some speci specific causes of the colic which we have done at our place. So the first uh, is the impaction. See the impaction. So this is a pelvic flexure. This is pelvic flexure. This is this is pelvic flexure, and this is um, uh, left ventral colon, and this is this is left dorsal colon. So this is left dorsal colon. See how big. This is uh, impaction of large colon is there. Then we did uh, uh, the the pelvic flexure. Um, so this is the most common site of obstruction which I discussed. All it discussed the last uh, lecture as well. And this is this is an uh, intraoperative photograph of impacted ingesta in right dorsal and transverse colon that was impacted. So what we did in that particular, we opened up and we put the the water pipe and then we relieved uh, the impacted part of uh, impaction in this part of intestine. Then this was the same. Then you see we did the enterotomy uh, at the level of pelvic flexure. Then this was a, a very uh, recently we did a surgery and there was the left dorsal part of the colon. Normally this part of the colon doesn't have a fecolith, but it was having a fecolith, and you can see. The necrotic changes are there. We have to resect this portion as well. And the lactate in this horse was was uh, it was seven millimole. It was seven millimole. Now you can see why the lactate was seven millimole because there are some necrotic changes are there, and uh, there was some infection in the peritoneum as well. So that's why the lactate level has has been uh, seven millimole as well. So this was the fecolith which we have removed from here. F is fecolith. And you can see it's a collapsed uh, part. Uh, this is a oral portion, a oral portion of the intestine. This is an oral portion of the intestine. It's a dilated, and this is collapsed because it was being obstructed by the fecolith. And this is a large colon valvulus. In this case, the the uh, the lactate level was 12 millimole. 
when we performed uh, uh, pre operatively we performed lactate level then we told to the owner that this horse is not going to survive and owner uh, want surgery need to be done then when we opened up it was all necrotic because the large colon large colon means i am talking about large colon is left part of the colon left colon that was having a volvulus and it was all hemorrhagic and it was a cyanotic as well so then we have to euthanize and this was a case in which was there was strangulation in scarcerated hernia when we opened up uh, the part of the intestine that was strangulated and the uh, lactate level was also quite high in this horse and this was a horse uh, case in which there was uh, segmental necrosis segmental necrosis of pelvic flexure pelvic flexure was necrotic because of the volvulus of the left side colon so part of was resected and it was again anastomosis was done and that horse responded to the treatment and this was a very interesting case it was a right dorsal displacement if you if you appreciate uh, the difference between the fig, uh, the two figures see uh, this is a meso colon this is a normal horse this one this one is a normal and this is abnormal okay so see this is seculated it means it's a left ventral colon and this is not seculated it means it's a left dorsal colon and this is a meso colon which they attach both uh, both left side dorsal and ventral colon they are attached with the meso colon and that meso colon is transparent but here you see uh, the, there is a, like mesenteric congestion of the mesenteric vessels all the vessels are con are they are they are uh, they are congested why they are congested because there is displacement is there and the blood supply is um, is uh, is obstructed so that's why the congestion of the blood is there in this part of the and this is very much diagnostic if, if the mesentery has congestion it means the case is of a right dorsal displacement of large colon is there so this was a particular horse this horse has a very interesting uh, history i'll say this horse was from punjab police and when they are presented it was having when it came to the hospital within one hour that horse developed a very severe colic it was presented with a mild colic but very severe colic was there and immediately we we took to the surgical facility and we found that it was having a left a left large colon torsion was there see how much ischemia is there so large colon and now that horse is fit and fine is back to the duty as well so this was a horse uh, in which like uh, we we did a surgery and there was a polythene bag it was a mule which was a polythene bag was there in the pelvis flexure obstruction so that was the cause of colic uh, and obstruction in that particular mule and this was in a small colon um, one of my friend from chandigarh referred to this one and the horse was having a history of uh, um, history of eating foreign bodies so when we took out we saw and those foreign bodies was were uh, were present in the small colon this is small colon how we identified because there is a band is there here you can see the band and circulations are there uh, last lecture i told you that their circulations will be there in small colon as well so these circulations and the band we will we were able to identify that this is uh, the small colon obstruction due to foreign bodies polythene rope belt and polythene bags were there and that was so these foreign bodies they are likely to obstruct uh, into the uh, into the small colon so there was an enterolith was there enterolith they can also happen uh, into the small colon normally the, these enterolith they can um, can be managed by medicinal treatment we can give sufficient amount of the fluid uh, and those they can be they, these enterolith can be relieved but sometime we have to perform surgery if those enterolith they they are quite hard and they they don't respond to the medical treatment so see uh, the the oral portion ordered portion of uh, uh, the the small colon uh, to the fecolith it is all distended and this one is collapsed so then we took out the fecolith and this is again a fecolith in a small colon this is cecum so this is small colon so small colon when we removed any of the responded uneventfully so this was a case from a chandigarh police uh so this case uh, was having an enterolith see the enterolith in small colon this is a small colon so enterolith is over here see some necrotic changes are there into the small colon here another second enterolith was there into the small colon as well we took out both the enterolith and that horse really responded uh, really well and fortunately these enterolith can work easily palpated perfectly as one of the enterolith was palpated another we have we found it at the time of surgery 
so into susception of the small intestine you see uh, there is uh, into say one part of the intestine is going into or telescoping is there going into another part so into susception of the small intestine can be there and there is a volvulus of the small intestine that led to necrosis we have to put down that particular horse so this is a uh, was a horse in which we did a surgery because of having a uh, lactate level was quite high so uh, this lactate uh, there was a segmental necrosis because of the lipoma and this mare was 14 year old mare and this lipoma disease is in in old age horses so this was a necrosis and perforation of cecum and this was a cecal cecal tympani this is a cecal tympani here is a perforation is there and peritonitis was there and uh, this was like a few interesting uh, cases which i want to discuss now comes to the post operative surgical uh, patient care so uh, patient assessment include physical means after surgery we need to do repeated physical examination water need to be given and food intake monitoring need to be done fecal production and its character need to be blood examination need to be done repeatedly pcv total protein every 24 hours as well as lactate may be every 6 to 12 hours fluid therapy need to be given so all the so replace so we need to give fluid 10 to 20 ml per kg per hour has to be given and we we have seen that up to 20 to 45 ml per kg per hour animal can tolerate as well so maintenance fluid has to be is 2 ml per kg it has to be added into the this fluid uh, add according to body weight add this much as well this is the amount of the fluid which you need to be given in one hour and if you think there is hypoproteinemia is there or animal is still in shock then colloids can be given uh, in order to improve the blood pressure or oncotic pressure as well non steroid anti inflammatory flunixil meglumine can be given twice a day then post operatively intravenous lidocaine means or lignocaine 2% to improve the gastrointestinal motility bitorphinol can be used for improving the behavior bitorphinol xalazine both works preoperatively as well and and intraoperatively both are drugs they can they can work equally so preoperatively both combination i will highly recommend use of the combination of alpha 2 agonist means xalazine and bitorphinol preoperatively in order to reduce the pain uh, so antimicrobial drugs can be given antimicrobial drugs uh, like penicillin uh we what we are doing right now we are going uh, uh, uh piperacillin tazobactam combination we are using and it works really well post operatively and um, along with amikacin and gentamicin can be given combination of the penicillin group and um, amino glycosides has to be given uh, post operatively and feeding is introduced 8 to 12 hours of surgery fresh grass alpha alpha he should be offered every 3 to 4 hours and water should be over, uh, offered ev- immediately after surgery so one thing this is about the post operative and uh, another thing is post operatively we can monitor the patient ultrasonographically as well so ultrasonographically can can tell you about uh, the intestinal motility and any formation of the peritoneal fluid as well uh, then there is some point is there which i want to discuss we have seen uh, during the uh, my research as well that uh, the colic patient equine colic is very common in winter season especially in winter season so uh, because what happens during winter season less green is available so st- uh, what the farmer used to do is they started giving them a lot of wheat straw one thing is wheat wheat straw is not for horses they are for ruminants means animal which ruminate they the we need to give the wheat straw to them so horses they don't ruminate so try to educate the farmer and discourage them from giving wheat straw to a horse because infection can be there uh, in a horse which is on on wheat straw and that can lead to recurrent colic so less green is there during winter so sometime there is a, a wheat straw is the problematic less water ingestion is there that is another cause of uh, colic during winter season and cold water is being offered to the horses that's also a cause of colic so warm lukewarm water should be given to the horses and another thing is reduced exercise during winter the winter during winter horses they remain inside in the stable the so most of the time so that's also a cause of colic more colic 
in winter season try to cover up these cases try to give some lukewarm water increase the exercise give some hay or silage during when if less green is available start giving hay rather than giving wheat straw or rice husk is there don't ever uh, think about giving wheat even because that leads to the gas colic as well so no feeding of wheat straw oil avoid sudden change so this is uh, the way we should prevent uh prevent the colic and we should and educate to the to the farmers especially uh, if they want to uh, avoid um, colic in particular uh, in, the, in their horses this is a video this is uh, the link which i'll be sharing uh, i'm sharing right now so there is one video is there which i had uploaded on youtube so surgery was done a complete surgery from anesthesia from recovery from uh, surgery prospect and recovery you can you can go to the this link as well or you can open up the youtube and type dr arun anand in the search uh, icon and then there will be a structive equine colic video will appear and you just see the video so this is video by our institution and it will give you a uh, fairly good idea that how surgery can be done in a uh, in a equine uh, equine facility so this is all about my medicinal part and surgical part of the treatment and if you have any queries uh, just let me know so i'll try to give you some uh, like satisfactory answers as well so i dedicate this webinar as well to the indian army uh, who gave their supreme supreme sacrifice in galwan valley ladakh protecting our motherland so god bless our defense forces jai hind so that's all hello yeah yeah doctor arun yes is there any queries yeah yeah many queries are there Oh, I am fortunate that uh, people are taking interest and uh, asking me the questions. Mm. Yeah. Ah, just to for the information of the group, uh, we have received a lot of uh, questions saying that people could not uh, log in yesterday. Uh huh. Uh, uh -huh. The session. So we have uh, displayed the link once again. The recorded version is available. So all those who could not can do that today. Uh mm huh. -hmm. and uh, next is the ray of questions i will say that before taking the questions i'll be happy to say that both arun and myself are from gadwaso so i'll take a little little liberty of talking to <laughs> yeah 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 we are friends since i think uh, 1995 yeah. I, am i right am i right yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. i am yeah. 90 batch arun is 91 batch so yeah. that is Now the basic question, which I, I can see that we have uh, attendance which was close to 295 today. Yeah, so, very good. Uh, which is good for the equine sector predominantly. Uh, some basic questions which have come in could be from graduates. Uh, is uh, what is the importance of enema in therapeutic management of colic? Next is uh, what is the, uh, yeah I'll just say two three basic questions and then you can yeah, yeah 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 uh, what is the role of lactate because since yesterday our lactate levels have been switched up and down because of uh, some technical errors at different areas so there's a question which says what is the lactate and what is the importance of lactate in equine colic over to Dr Arun yes uh, the first thing is anema. Um, i will not recommend anema in horses basically because uh, if there is like uh, any obstruction is there then obstruction the the nearest portion from the anus where the obstruction can happen it can happen in small colon okay so those that, that part will not be approachable at all so the instead of anema if you give adequate amount of iv fluid that will be more having pro a kinetic property rather than anema anema is fine in for small animals but for the horses anema may not work so rather than anema if you give through nasogastric tube some lubricant like paraffin oil you can give paraffin oil you can give or you can give a duss another thing is i will not recommend giving mustard oil as well to the horses so paraffin is fine mustard oil sometime can can lead to problem in horses and even sometimes some at some places i have seen there is a turpentine oil is also given along with mustard oil so i will highly discourage that practice as well so give duss uh, lubricant and uh, even paraffin but anema i don't think it's going to work 
second uh, query is about the lactate lactate yesterday i have discussed about the lactate um, i think almost 20 uh, uh, 10 to 15 minutes i discussed about the lactate as well so i think uh, some of the participants may not able to uh, attend that seminar so uh, regarding the lactate um, there is like three tests which i recommended uh, if you want to monitor a particular horse um, during uh, during your medical treatment or before starting your medical treatment and during the medical treatment the three tests which i recommended is the pcv total protein and lactate so these three tests they can be done at any human lab even if you don't have any access to the veterinary lab go to the human lab they will be happy to do that these three tests pcv total protein and lactate so these three tests they are paramount and they works really well to see which way your horse is going in spite of treatment whether your horse is responding to the medical treatment or is not responding so these three tests pcv it should remain below 40 or it should be maximum up to 45 it's fine if it is going above 45 it means your medical treatment is not working same way is the total protein 8.5 is the limit and for the lactate 3 millimole is the limit if up to 3 millimole uh, if your uh, treatment is your medical treatment is going on you are giving fluid you are giving analgesics you are giving level, uh, lubricants and a horse is uh, lactate level remains within 3 millimole or up to 3 and a half millimole then it's okay and if it is in spite of treatment serial examination of the blood shows it's going up then medical treatment is not going to help so preoperatively or sorry not preoperatively before pre treatment and after treatment these serial test will give you fairly good idea because horse is really a costly animal and even uh, the owner can afford these test and these tests are not costly even pcu total protein and lactate that will cost around 300 rupees maximum so those tests can be repeated in order to so i will recommend lactate estimation at least in all the horses which are undergoing for colic treatment uh the next question dr arun is from your department only your hod he says highlight four to five critical points which will differentiate saying that this case goes to surgery and this case go to medical for colic for colic uh okay so i think i had already discussed i think uh, two times so yesterday as well and today as well so if the horse uh, is uh, the same pcv total protein lactate first three blood test then uh, nasogastric intubation if the nasogastric intubation is done if the if the reflex is um, up to 2 liter is fine if the reflex is more than 2 liter is going more than 5 liter then surgery is the only option if reflex is remains less than 2 liter then medical treatment is fine if distension is there uh and if uh, distension responds to the medical treatment or heart rate another is heart rate heart rate that remains below 55 then okay medical treatment is fine if is approaching 60 or going towards 80 and is um, near to 100 then surgery is the only option and then per rectal examination is done if you do the per rectal examination and you found that there is some mass is palpable at the pelvic flexor level or some big fecalis is being palpated at the level of small colon or there is a severe impaction is there in the cecum then rather than thinking about uh, medicinal treatment then we should straight away go for the surgery treatment uh, and another uh, thing is look at the mucous membrane color if the mucous membrane color is uh, normal or slightly injected even is fine but if it's going towards the violet color or it's going towards the muddy color then we should think about uh, surgery uh, to that patient yes uh if there are a few people who are mixed pra- practitioners or who are treating tanga and so on so mm-hmm. they have a saying that the colic if colic is because of a hemoprotozoal infection say trips even the mm-hmm. lactate levels are high there also is uh, bilirubin uh, or liver function could be another indicator of diagnosing colic um one thing is the trips they have uh, basically nervous sign so if uh, somebody is confusing the nervous sign with the colic sign then uh, they should they should not confuse these two uh, diseases trips can have a number of uh, 
um, other signs as well. But one of the sign can be the nervous sign. Means pawing is there. So abnormal restlessness is there. Uh, Sometimes animal likely to fall down. That can be a sign of trips. So trips can easily be found. But if the colic is there, then the that nervous sign will not be there. It will be clear cut. Means like you can from the sign you can see that this is a colic, not trips. So colic is basically distension will be there and and the heart rate. See the heart rate in in trips. No doubt there can be increase in the body temperature and heart rate likely to go up if there is a body temperature uh, that that goes up. So heart rate can go up. But if you see the lactate lactate level uh, will be uh, almost uh, normal in case of trips, but it can go up uh, if there is uh, some uh, um, necrotic changes are there going on in. So uh, trips can be diagnosed with the blood film examination, and uh, that can be. And even the co causative agent is different as well. The flies they bite, and the, so uh, regarding the li uh, liver function test, GGT can be the rather than bilirubin, GGT uh, can be the better indicator of the liver uh, function test in horses. And uh, in colic, the, the GGT level can go up. But that is not because of some liver disease. That is because animal is off feed. Sometimes off feed horses can have high GGT, but that GGT level will not be markedly high. It will be mild increase in the GGT level. But if there is a high level is there, it means there is some other issue is going on. Some liver issue is there. There is one Tizer disease is there that can also be the cause of uh, um, liver issues. But GGT level will not be markedly increase in colic horses. Thank you, Dr. Arun. The next question is probably from a pharmacologist. Is Dr. Vinod Kumar, whom I look at it from Hisar, actually. Uh, do prokinetic drugs have any role, like neostigmine and all, in equine colic? Ah, uh, yes. A very good question. So one thing is the neostigmine should not be used in horses at all. If you want a prokinetic. IV fluid, adequate amount of fluid, IV fluid that works uh, very good as a prokinetic. Second prokinetic drug which I already discussed is a lignocaine. That works better in horses. Lignocaine 2% which is easily available at any place. Uh, 1.3 milligram per kg as a bolus and 0 0.05 milligram per kg per minute in each and every bottle you can give or further bottles you can give. So that works better as a prokinetic rather than new stigma. New stigma I will contraindicate uh, in horses. So the next question is, is there any specific treatment for spasmodic colic? Uh, spasmodic colic uh, that is because of uh, uh, because of increased intestinal movement, peristaltic movement. Basically, you need to see why there is a peristaltic increased peristaltic movement is there. Is there some infection and tritus is there, or is there is like salmonella? Salmonella is the most common cause of tritus, especially if the animal is having any stress. So especially after transport, change in the season, even change in the feed that can also lead to the salmonellosis in horses. So salmonellosis, first thing we need to treat that particular disease. So uh, which which lead led to the uh, in, uh, to the increased uh, peristaltic movement. So the best thing is stop giving food, stop giving any feed, start with the IV fluid, start from antibiotics, uh, send the blood for examination and see uh, especially for salmonellosis, because salmonellosis in our country is the most common um, cause of enteritis as well as spasmodic colic. So uh, salmonellosis, it will have a leukopenia will be there. Uh, so along with the lympho uh, lymphopenia, so check for those uh, uh, leukopenia. If the, that is there, then start with them uh, with the salmonellosis treatment. And uh, second uh, cause of uh, uh, this. Uh, spasmodic colic is if animal ingest sand, sand like some horses they have a vices, a bad habit of eating sand, and those sands can have some uh, rubbing effect on the like a rubbing effect. It's a sandpaper like effect on the intestine, and that leads to uh, increase in uh, the peristaltic movement, and ultimately leads to the spasmodic colic. So those things need to be taken care. So otherwise, there is no particular drug we need to um, check. 
बिकॉज वी कांट वी शुड नॉट स्टॉप पेरेस्टाल्टिक मूवमेंट अदरवाइज इट कैन लीड टू दिस टेंशन सो आई वी फ्लू टेक केयर ऑफ एंटीबायोटिक टेक केयर ऑफ द इन्फेक्शन सो ऑटोमेटिकली दिस पॉजमोटिक विल बी टेकन केयर ऑफ how do we another question which comes from your question only which has been asked by many uh, how do we differentiate sand colic how do we differentiate sand colic uh, first thing is um, there is the sand colic owner will tell us that this my horse is having a habit of eating sand and it will be uh, more uh, near the desert, desert area or which is having the owner like uh, the uh, the horses which are left open and in the barren land out uh, land and which is having a lot of soil or the sand then the the uh, animal so owner will tell you in the history that uh, that my horse is eating the sand another thing is if the sand is there then fecal balls collect some fecal balls and dissolve into the water you will see the sand will settle down at the bottom then you can come to know that this horse is having habit of eating the sand and that can be the cause of sand colic the next question is is alpha alpha glass indicated for colic management post operatively number 1 number 2 what is the uh, ratio of roughage and concentrate required for minimizing the chances of colic colic yes okay now comes to the management part so uh, alpha alpha he basically uh, it has a lot of calcium and lot of um, protein as well so it can be given to horses but it shouldn't be exclusively given to the horses only alpha alpha should never be given because it can lead to further problem which i showed you the uh, the enterolith so because it has a lot of calcium enterolith chances of enterolith formation can be there but alpha alpha horses they are very good because they is a very good as a fodder to the horses post operatively as a pre operatively but it should be uh, it should be mixed with the green grass best uh, feed for a horse is green grass uh, one uh, two third green grass and one third you can give alpha alpha or you can give brassim as well or you can give lucerne or you can give even oats as well or green oats so one third that one and two third it should be green grass so that works really wonder green grass i'll say is uh, is is a very good grass um, fodder for green fodder for horses and uh, it will one why it is because it will not uh, it it has been seen the horses which are on green grass colic is less because it has a lot of fiber so chances of infection is less so green grass and um, alpha alpha or other grasses can be mixed together as a green then comes the second part of the diet that is a concentrate so concentrate can be given um, even to the like uh, horses but amount has to be adequate i'll say uh, in a in a horse which is not working at all so up to 1 and 1/2 to 2 kg of green uh, of a concentrate and that concentrate should include um, uh, and uh, this uh, uh, gram uh, black grams uh, half kg you can give black grams half kg you can give soya bean half k- uh, 250 gram of uh, you can give uh, mage uh, or corns what we call and then rest of uh, choker choker you can mix together and you can give as a uh, 2 kg but you should first uh, mix with like give some uh, so- with water mix with some water and then give it as a moist don't give as a dry this works as a source of energy as well and source of calcium as well and source of protein as well so the horse diet has a green and concentrate so if the horse is not working means it's a standing horse not we are not taking any work then 2 kg is fine but if you are take, working in a horse or we are riding we are uh, we are uh, doing a racing in a race course we are uh, for, for a performance horse the diet can go up to 4 kg in stallion during the breeding season we can give up to 5 kg of concentrate but if we are giving in a standing horse if, which is not working start giving 4 kg or 5 kg it will lead to the lameness and colic gas colic as well yes uh dr aran i'll uh, put a few questions together a number of people are asking what is the antibiotics that should be preferred what are the nsaids that are should be preferred in mm-hmm. equines in colics or around those conditions itself actually there are number of questions in the similar format 
you have already talked about piperacillin and tazobactam but still i'll request yeah you. yeah yeah there's cephalosporin and tazobactam combination that also works really well uh, in horses uh, and uh, um, along with amikacin so amikacin that can be given at the rate of 10 mg per kg per day or uh, if you want to give uh, once a day Uh, od but if you want to give twice a day you give 5 mg per kg morning 5 mg per kg evening once a day 10 mg per kg can be given and uh, piperacillin can be given at 50 mg 50 50 mg per kg morning 5 mg per kg evening and the uh, and cephalosporin tazobactam combination 4.5 g morning and evening can be given as well and uh, in some literature it has been given that uh, cephalosporin can lead to diarrhea in some of the horses but on those horses we can give uh, even amikacin um, uh, um, amikacin combination amikacin cloxacin combination as well the next question and probably i'll say the last question is how can we prevent ileus after the operative what operative care is required so that we can have minimum chances of ileus ileus yes um chance so the development of ileus is there uh, after surgery but uh, if we take care uh, properly the, again i'll be repeating iv fluid will work over here as well iv fluid um, intravenously uh, with after application of iv catheter which video i have shown you and you can watch the video again as well so those uh, catheter we put into the into the animal uh, into the vein and we start with the fluid and that fluid is continued for whole of the day and that fluid will prevent the development of the ileus as well and another cause of the ileus is infection if you don't allow the infection to build up then chances of ileus is less the ileus another cause can be the um, the development uh, like if adhesions are there adhesions are formed with the intestine and the abdomen then chances of ileus can be there but those uh, is because of the infection if infection is taken care then ileus and another thing is ligno can can also be given as a prokinetic or uh, to avoid uh, the development of paralytic ileus we were supposed to close but one question comes up from the attendees very regularly why lactate only for measuring in horses we have never heard it earlier why lactate only in equine colic commonly said by dr arun i leave it on to him to answer it back i lactate okay one thing is lactate is a very good indicator of uh, some uh, like uh, necrotic or septicemic changes or some compromised if some blood com- uh, intestine a part of intestine is having compromised blood supply and that compromised blood supply may be because of the uh, because of some displacement or because of distension whenever there is a distension is there even then there is a blood compromised is there to a, that particular part of intestine when distension leads to the compromise compromised blood supply that leads to some changes and lactate likely to shoot up so that's why the lactate is a very good indicator so otherwise uh, because i have seen personally because i have i i working for last 11 years on horses and i have seen and it's a very reliable indicator preoperatively uh, as well as postoperatively or even for pre medication as uh, pre treatment medical treatment as well as in order to uh, in order to see the progress of uh, the horse do after treatment as well because it tells us about changes in the intestine level so that's why the lactate is a very suitable and reliable indicator in a quine colic any such uh, condition in bovines which will make lactate important bovine uh, basically you know from outside the horses looks like a very sturdy and powerful animal and a very enduring animal but inside if you see it's a very weak animal and they respond to changes very quickly inside and uh, the but it's entirely different entirely opposite in in, in uh, Uh, i'll say uh, in uh, in ruminants so ruminants they can even eat the nails screws sharp nails and even nothing happens to the 
so even some injuries there nothing happens so they are very sturdy animal so lactate uh, is not so much uh, like indicator over there so their ultrasound that also works really good in in ruminants because gas accumulation is not so common in although bloat can be there but there is on only in the human part or some uh, four stomach part as well but uh, but in a large colon a large part intestine doesn't have gas but uh, ultrasound can be the better uh, uh, diagnostic aid tool for the ruminant rather than uh, lactate i'll say so what dr arun says is lactate is not much important for ruminants as it is for equine practice yes. fully agreed on that the last question which is again coming up is if you say fluid therapy you said say 5 liters is also very less but what type of fluid therapy is recommended for colic is it 5% 10% 20% or electrolytes or what uh, i told you like i think i already told you in the in my presentation that ringer lactate that is that ringer lactate uh, is a very good fluid um, for for the uh, for the horses because it has uh, it it is having electrolytes lot of electrolytes electrolytes are there so sodium is there potassium is there bicarbonates are there so though that works really well or if you want to combine you can combine normal saline with uh, ringer lactate as well um, half of the ringer lactate half of the normal saline you can give so that works really well along with if another thing is uh, if there is a shock is developing you can give high uh, saline means uh, mm, uh, saline which is 7.2% saline as well you can give so hypertonic saline can also be given to horses because i told you in my presentation that uh, the horse can um, can tolerate uh, sodium very well in the body so that's why hypertonic saline ringer lactate normal saline can also work really well and even colloids can also be given colloids can also be given crystalloids we are already discussed colloids can also be given so um, so you can give uh, but preferably it should be ringer lactate i'll not uh, ask any more questions to dr arun because his lactate levels are becoming high now <laughs> so uh, we'll close the session uh, very nice session wherein yesterday we had around 200 people and today the number is grown to 300 which means that people have really liked we understand that many people could not attend the session yesterday so just for the knowledge of those people the links are available for the next 30 days for yesterday's lecture and today's lecture you can view them if you have missed on that I thank Dr. Arun for a very elaborate lecture, two days lecture on equine colic. I thank, on behalf of ISVS and on behalf of Intas, to each and every person being there. Thank you to all, and thank you all. Yeah, I, I just Dr. want to Arun, add, add. I just want yeah. to add one thing. Yeah. Dr. Arun, there is also a request from many people to share the presentation. So, if you can share to the organizers and they can mail it down to people, it will be great. Okay. Because equine colic, equine sector is a sector different sector and people like to get themselves out there yeah so i i want to also appreciate uh, the initiative taken by ihsvs and intas animal health they are doing a wonderful job at this difficult time because uh, now everyone knows there is some uh, like virus is there outside so rather than um, sharing such type of webinars and um, organizing these type of webinars they work for our uh, profession and one thing is our profession should grow so that should be the motto <laughs> thank you to all thank you yeah. dr deepak dr devesh and the entire team of isvs all the delegates all the vets undergraduates postgraduates academicians scientists and field veterinarians for being there thank you all thank you to all okay thank you